Are you like me and sync your blockchains only when you need them, leaving you forced to wait hours or even days for a sync to complete? Have you ever wondered if your 1996 hard drive is to blame? Hello everyone and welcome to Altcoin XP. My name is Anthony and today I'm going to attempt to solve all those issues and more by swapping my ancient hard drive with a blazing fast SSD. So the computer I'm using is a bit dated, but it shouldn't be too bad for running Geth. It's an overclocked 4770K, 24 gigs of RAM, a GTX 670, a bunch of SSDs, and a hard drive. Geth runs on the hard drive, which is partitioned in two. The first partition being where I store things like documents, pictures, movies, and other various junk. The second is encrypted with TrueCrypt and is where I store private files and is also where I run cryptocurrency nodes. Now being that the hard drive is both partitioned and encrypted, that may be causing the hard drive to run a bit slower than normal. Keep that in mind when I show you how slow Geth is syncing. As you can see, it's syncing 1-5 to five blocks every 10 seconds, and the hard drive is pegged above 95% utilization. This is with Geth set to use 1 gigabyte of cache and increasing or decreasing the cache limit yields the same results. Now I'm not exactly sure what's going on here. Five blocks every 10 seconds, I think is like 10 kilobytes per second, which is nowhere near the hard drive's max throughput. So Geth must be stressing the hard drive in some other way. It doesn't seem to be uploading a lot since my network usage doesn't reflect that. And it's definitely Geth stressing the hard drive because closing the application drops utilization down to zero. So since I don't know the exact cause of this, I'm going to solve the issue the only way I know how, by throwing a ton of money at the problem until it goes away. Let me introduce you to the 1TB Samsung 850 EVO SSD. This is what will be replacing the current 1TB Western Digital Caviar Black. This EVO is a refurb that I got off of eBay for around $270, saving me roughly $85 versus the cost of a brand new SSD. It comes with the same 5 year warranty directly from Samsung as a new drive, and I make really frequent backups so I'm not too worried about it being a used drive. Here's an as SSD benchmark of the drive's performance. This time, the whole drive will be dedicated to running cryptocurrency nodes and storing a few private files. No more partitions here. It'll also be encrypted with the exact same TrueCrypt settings as the current hard drive. This way, comparisons will match up. So let's get our swap on with our mop on and get the swap taken care of. <laughs> So we have a problem, that one terabyte SSD doesn't show up in BIOS. This is my new SSD, and I have a basketball game tomorrow, Samsung EVO. Samsung 850, one terabyte SSD. Well, now that I got a working SSD, we can finally see if there's any performance improvement. Well, not just yet. Encrypting took an hour, and transferring files over from the old hard drive took an additional five hours. A pain in my butt, which I'll share you guys the agony of waiting through. We can now see we're syncing around 30 blocks every 8 seconds, which is much faster than the 3 blocks every 10 plus seconds we were seeing on the hard drive. And the SSD is topping out around 50% utilization, but most of the time, it's much lower than that. Running a hard drive at 99% utilization for so long definitely causes some unwanted wear on the parts, which decreases the drive's lifespan. So I'm happy taking the strain off of my drive, and overall I'm happy with the upgrade to the SSD. But who wouldn't be? SSDs are way better. We already knew that. Anyway, while I have you guys here, this does bring up the question of if storage capacity and bandwidth are going to be limitations with Ethereum in the future. Talking about this wasn't the intent of this video, 
but it's a good time to touch on some things here anyway. I had no problem syncing the Bitcoin blockchain on my old hard drive, but that drive wasn't up to the task with Ethereum. Maybe partitioning and encrypting the drive slowed it down, but Bitcoin ran fine in the same environment. This tells me it's more expensive to run Ethereum software than the Bitcoin software, as Ethereum is more IO intensive. With that in mind, I did reach out to some people who said they run nodes and mine Ethereum from hard drives with no problem at all. So my experience may be in the minority here, but it still brings up the discussion about decentralization and network health issues caused by it being expensive to run a full node. Running a node helps miners download the chain and next blocks faster. More nodes equal a healthier network since miners don't have to rely on each other for block information. As you can see in this drawing, a node can be a faster information pathway between two miners. Running your own node can also help you since many wallets use their own nodes that their wallet software connects to. These nodes are what tell the wallet your cryptocurrency balance and allow you to make transactions without having to download the full blockchain yourself. But this also means you're at the mercy of the wallet operator to keep their node online. If their node goes offline or gets screwed up, then so does your wallet until the issues get fixed or you switch to another wallet. For most people, this isn't an issue they rather have the convenience of not having to download and maintain the blockchain themselves. But some people prefer to limit the amount they rely on third parties, choosing to run their own node instead. So what do I think about Ethereum needing an SSD and Bitcoin not? Does this provide some advantage to Bitcoin or vice versa? It definitely sucks having to spend money on an SSD to run one specific program. And my experience does show Ethereum is more IO intensive than Bitcoin. However, I'm not sure if that's a deal breaker for Ethereum, especially since most users seem to prefer the convenience of third parties storing the blockchain. And the people I talk to say that they run Ethereum nodes just fine on hard drives already. We already see that a majority of users prefer using third party wallets. And I think this won't change, despite how cheap or easy it may be to run a node themselves. Though ideally, the absolute best way to store a majority of your cryptocurrency is on your own node, and to only use mobile wallets for tiny spending amounts. And what about people who want to run the Ethereum blockchain for research and development purposes? Well, I can't draw this conclusion from my experience in this video, but I can take a guess on if it will affect them or not. I think even if they weren't able to utilize Ethereum on a hard drive, they would bite the bullet and purchase an SSD, simply for the ability to develop on something much different than Bitcoin. Ethereum does still offer much more freedom and flexibility than Bitcoin does. Not to mention, they could also just develop on the Ethereum testnet instead. I think the testnet would still work on a hard drive since the blockchain is smaller and there are many less transactions. Then they could move their project over to the mainnet blockchain when their project is ready for production. Also, we do have the option to do a fast sync and blockchain pruning, so does Bitcoin. And I didn't talk about that in this video because I'm thinking in the absolute worst case scenario with the maximum development flexibility. And that means storing a full blockchain. Well, that's it for today, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this video. It took me quite a bit of time to make between receiving a broken SSD that delayed the video and having to record parts multiple times because I screw up plus having to film the b-roll footage and writing the script and all that. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I would really appreciate if you would donate Bitcoin, Ethereum, or Dash to the addresses both on screen and in the video description. I really need the funds to ensure a continued operation of this channel. Also, please like, subscribe, and share this video.
And whitelisting my YouTube channel from your ad blocking software is also a good idea as that helps me get ad revenue. And again, following me on Twitter, Facebook, and the Altcoin XP subreddit helps me become internet famous. So that's it, my friends. You guys are truly awesome. Take care and goodbye.